It's the third Sunday of Advent, the Sunday that we celebrate our joy in Christ. And today I come to bring you tidings of comfort and joy. Turn with me in your Bibles or in your bulletins to hear these prophecy about the Messiah that I hope brings you tidings of comfort and joy. Isaiah 35, 1 to 10. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and shouting. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it. The majesty of Carmel and Sharon, they shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Let's say this together. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, the ears of the deaf shall be opened, and the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For water shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. The haunt of jackals shall become a swamp and the grass shall become reeds and rushes. A highway shall be there. It shall be called the holy way. The unclean shall not travel on it, but it shall be for God's people. No traveler, not even fools, shall go astray. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast come upon it. They shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. Let's say this together. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Now, there's two big things that really jump out at me in this passage that I think are for us in this year, that for many of us, this has been a tough year. It has felt at times in our lives like there's a dry desert, and we're thirsty and parched for just a drink of water of of encouragement or love. It's just been, we've faced hardship and adversity. We've gone through challenges and faced problems. But God says to us, strengthen your weak hands. In other words, don't grow weary in your well-doing. Keep doing your work for the Lord. And then he says, make firm the feeble knees. And that makes me think of, don't stop praying. Continue to pray. Continue to seek God's face. Continue to keep following the Lord. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, and why don't we say this to one another? Be strong. Do not fear. Let's say that. Be strong. Do not fear. It says in the Bible, 365 times, do not fear or do not be afraid. And here's what Isaiah says about God. It's personal. Here is your God, whom you have a relationship with. And He's going to come. And He's going to come, it's kind of scary, with vengeance. In other words, He is going to make everything right. He is going to over, Jesus is going to come and flip the tables again. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense or reckoning. And he will come not to condemn us, but to save you. That's good news. So we don't take vengeance because vengeance belongs to the Lord. Amen. He's going to come with terrible recompense on that day of reckoning. And he is going to make everyone and call all of us to account the righteous and the wicked, for everything we've done, we've said, or we've thought. But the good news is, He's going to come and save those of us who have faith in Jesus Christ. And I love what it says here in verses 5 and 6. This is what came true literally in Jesus' ministry. The eyes of the blind shall be opened. The ears of the deaf shall be opened. Remember in the Gospels, when Jesus healed a blind man, he took and spit on the ground and and mixed his mud with dirt to make spit or to make mud and put it on the guy's eyes and prayed, be opened, and he could see. Or then when somebody couldn't hear, he stuck his finger in his mouth, put, put saliva on his finger, 
stuck his finger in the guy's ear and prayed in Aramaic, Epata, which means be opened. That literally happened and the guy could hear. Or the guy at the pool of Bethesda who'd been crippled most of his life. And he begged for Jesus to just bring him to the water so he could be healed in that, in that pagan fountain. But Jesus is like, you don't need that. I'm here. He says, get up, take your mat, and go home. And when the guy got up and took his mat, he was leaping like the deer. And that prayer, that prophecy was significant for me this week. He says, the tongue of the speechless will sing for joy. But I went and I got a call this week, and Shirley King fell and broke her femur. And she was in the hospital at Blessing, and I went to Blessing and, and, and pray with her. And, and that morning I was working on, the, on this scripture, and I saw, I saw this passage. And as soon as I got the call, I was like, wow, Lord, you sure got my attention when I was focused on the lame shall leap like a deer. And I prayed that over her and with her, prayed for her healing in Jesus' name. And thank you for your prayers for Shirley. Has anybody heard how her surgery went? Did Okay. Okay. Did they move her to Springfield or St. Louis? Springfield. Okay. So thanks for the update on that. Um, but and she appreciates your love and your prayers. Uh, she told me. Um, but yeah, the lame will leap like a deer, and that's that's our hope and prayer for Shirley as well that she'll heal. Um, but then the, the, in verse ten, look at uh, or in verse eight and nine, the highway, that holy way, that way is Jesus Himself. Remember in John fourteen six, what did Jesus tell us? He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus is that holy way. Jesus walks the road ahead of us so that we can follow in his footsteps. And even when we don't, when we're not sure where to go or or we lose heart, Jesus will even pick us up on that journey and carry us in his footsteps. He is that holy way. And His way is for God's people. And I love this. No traveler who follows Jesus, not even fools, and we can all be fools, I know I can, shall go astray if we follow Jesus. But the redeemed shall walk there. The ransomed of the Lord, Isaiah says. And we have been redeemed by Jesus. We have been ransomed. We have been bought back and Our sins are paid in full. Jesus came to take our heads out of the shackles of sin and fear that leads to death. Freed us from our past guilt and shame and pain and blame in our our past sins. We have been forgiven for our past sins. And we are now free to follow him and to walk there as the redeemed, as the ransomed of the Lord who shall return and come to that holy mountain, Zion, with singing. Joy shall be upon our heads, not just any joy, but everlasting joy. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. I don't know about you, but I needed to to hear that this morning. That we shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Why don't we say that together? We shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. In Revelation, John writes to to tell us that promise that when we get to the new heavens and the new earth and the new Jerusalem and that holy city where Jesus Christ is enthroned as the King of kings and Lord of lords, where the river of life flows from his throne and the tree of life grows with roots on both sides and there's fruit for each month of the year and the leaves are for the healing of the nation. And Jesus will come and wipe away every tear from our eyes. And there'll be no more sighing or sorrow or grief or pain or sin or death. It will all be defeated and we will have eternal life with Jesus Christ our Lord. And we won't even need the sun because the light of the Son of God will shine upon us. Amen? We shall obtain joy and gladness. Sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Well, let's hear some more Words of tidings of comfort and joy. Turn in your hymnals, or if it's on the screen, this is um, 
in Luke 1, 67 to 79 on page, or sorry, Luke 1, 46 to 45 on page 199 in your hymnals, or if it's on the screen. When Mary was pregnant with Jesus and Elizabeth was pregnant with John the Baptist, Mary came over to Elizabeth's house and Elizabeth felt her baby John the Baptist leap in her womb as soon as Mary and Jesus in the womb came in. And John was filled with the Holy Spirit and leaped with joy. And Elizabeth's like, oh, my Lord, God has come to me to visit me. My, my Savior has come. And she blesses Mary and she blesses God. And then Mary prays this awesome prayer, this awesome hymn where she uses that arister. It's like a past tense saying that God has already done this. She's not seeing with her eyes. She's seeing with the eyes of her heart with faith. She's walking by faith and not by sight in this moment. Let's, let's do this responsive reading on 199. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, who has looked with favor on me, a lowly servant. From this day, all generations shall call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me. And holy is the name of the Lord, whose mercy is on those who fear God from generation to generation. The arm of the Lord is strong and has scattered the proud in their conceit. God has cast down the mighty from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. God has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich empty away. God has come to the aid of Israel, the chosen servant, remembering the promise of mercy, the promise made to our forebears, to Abraham and his children forever. Wow. I love where she says, the Almighty has done great things for me. Think about this year. You might have had a hard year. But the Almighty has still done great things for you. Why don't you say with me again, the Almighty has done great things for me. For you, for me. And holy is the name of the Lord. Wow. And then she talks about the might of the Lord and how he scatters the proud in, the, in their conceit or in the vain imaginations of their hearts. He's cast down the mighty from their thrones and lifted up the lowly, even while Jesus was just in the womb at that time. God has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich empty and away. Remember when Jesus preached in the Sermon on the Mount, in the Beatitudes, he said, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. When God makes a promise, it's as good as done. Amen? Amen. He has come to the aid of Israel, the chosen servant, remembering the promise of his mercy. So when you're feeling down, remember, Mary was facing insurmountable circumstances that she, that she couldn't comprehend. But she, she navigated it through the eyes of her heart of faith. She walked by faith and not by sight. And she trusted God and took God at his word. She even would pray, May it, when the angel told her, you're going to have Jesus, and he's going to save you from your sins. And she's, she said, here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. That's the kind of faith that Mary had, and I hope that we can have that faith this Christmas season. But let's hear more tidings of gladness and, and comfort and joy. And turn to 208 in your hymnals. This is Zechariah, who was the father of John the Baptist. And during that pregnancy, an angel of the Lord struck Zechariah mute for God's glory. And then when they were asking after he was born, what shall his name be? He wrote on the tablet, his name is John. And then he could speak. And then he praised God. The first words that came out of his mouth were this. Let's say it together. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to set the chosen people free. The Lord has raised up for us a mighty Savior from the house of David. Through the holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. 
to show mercy to our forebears and to remember the holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship without fear, holy and righteous in the Lord's sight all the days of our life. Now he's talking about his son. You, child, that is John the Baptist, shall be called prophet of the Most High, and you will go before the Lord to prepare the way, to give God's people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Wow. I'm just in awe of the words that the Holy Spirit gave him that were prophetic about Jesus and are good news for us even today. That God raised up a mighty Savior from the house of David in Jesus Christ to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us, and even from the hands of our enemies and all who continue to hate us, even to this day, to show us mercy because He remembered His covenant, to set us free from the hands of our enemies. Free for what? Not just to do what we want, but free to worship the Lord without fear. We worship Him in spirit and in truth because the Father is seeking those who will worship Him in spirit and in truth. Amen? Amen. And we are to worship Him without fear. Why? Because the perfect love of God casts out all fear. That we can go before the throne with boldness to worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And John prepared the way for us. John preached the gospel where he said, The time has come, the kingdom of heaven is at hand and is drawn near, so repent and believe in the gospel. And he baptized people with water for for repentance and the forgiveness of sins. But he said, one coming after me, I'm not even worthy to bend down and untie his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. That is, he will purify us from our sins and make us holy through the Holy Spirit. That's, That's Jesus he's talking about to prepare the way, to give us knowledge of salvation and the forgiveness of our sins. And I love how it ends, the tender compassion of our God, the God who is not just sorry for us, but sorry with us in Jesus Christ. Amen? He who knew no sin became sin so that we might become his righteousness. The tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high, shall break upon us. You know, we have a, it is said that The night is darkest just before the dawn. But once that dawn comes and that new day comes, you forget about the night before, don't you? That we walk in His marvelous light to shine His light that shines on us even as we dwell in darkness and even as we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Yet we will fear no evil, amen? For His rod and staff comfort us to guide our feet into the way of God peace. And you, as the hands and feet of Jesus, 